Hello everybody, I'm Steve and welcome to Greenside Up. And today we're going to be in the main tunnel mostly because I want to show you um, around the uh, grapevine in there and some of the problems that I've caused myself by how I've planted it and looked after it. So we'll go in there in a minute, but first I just want to show you in the new tunnel what I've been up to in there this last couple of days. So in the new tunnel, it was only finished, sheeted mid-June and then quickly planted just to see what it would do. The intention was never to get crops out of this and I have had a few crops. I've had some aubergines, some uh, few tomatoes and uh, what else was it? Oh yeah, all my, my sweet corn that was in that area. Most of the plants now that were in here have ripped out. You can see I've dug out all around, even this pathway getting ready for its next stage because the tunnel wasn't finished in June and I've just got a few crops in here that are still growing these aubergines are still coming along we're still getting fruits so I've left those in I've got melons over here I think I counted four yesterday when I had a look around there's another one over here and of course these tomatoes are doing incredibly well in here these are all the side shoots off the crimson crush and since I've taken that corn down, well, you can see now that these are start, starting to ripen and they should do pretty quickly now because they've got good access to the sunlight from over in that direction because the sun arcs around over there through the day. So once these are done, all this framework will come out, all the plants will be dug up and the whole thing dug over again uh, just to get it down. And then I can start uh, playing in here if you like turn it into a bit of a workshop over winter at the same time getting it ready for spring next year so that's in a good state for now just got to remember to water these few plants that are left in here so that's where we're up to with this this is my grapevine and the variety is black hamburg we have three tiers on here hopefully you can see there one another one in the middle and then one a bit higher up so three tiers and the main stem is right in the middle of the tunnel at the very edge over there I'll show you that just now tunnels 28 foot long so basically I've got 28 by three times on the vines that's that's how big they are and here just behind these boxes and between these trays is where it's coming out of the ground right I planted this five years ago and me being me, being a bit of a clever dick, uh, I didn't really listen to the advice. I went my own way, which is kind of normal for me. The advice was to plant the plant outside, put a hole in your polytunnel and feed the growth through and grow it that way. So your roots are outside and getting watered. That was the advice. But because that bed all along there has got a bit of kale in it at the minute, it was very wet and stayed wet when I planted it. Uh, I thought, well, that will be good enough and it will take away some of that excess moisture because the tunnel is actually dug down lower than the ground level just beyond the side of the tunnel there. So I figured it would be okay. And it has been as far as watering is concerned, really. Um, I don't have to water it that often. But I have got a separate issue with this plant and it's called shanking. And it's a broad spectrum term. I mean, you can see this is shanking here where you can see these grapes haven't developed and they've just shriveled. Um, I say it's a broad spectrum term. It can be overwatering, underwatering, not enough nutrition, too much nutrition, uh, not enough sunlight. I say it's a very, very broad spectrum term. But what I think it is, is that I've been, tried to be too clever myself uh, when I read round them, from what I remember when I was younger, the advice has always been to have fewer vines and but better ones. And as the plant grew up, it was growing well, and I thought, well, I'll have the three sets on either side. It's not really. I mean, I have got quite a lot of fruit. I mean, just in this little area here, there's probably 10 bunches. And that's great, lots of fruit. But I don't know if you can see from this, how much this how much this wire is sagging under the weight of it so i need to even this out i need to solve some of the issues and uh 
I'll just reset up the camera and I'll show you another issue I've got with this. Now we're now looking down the side of the tunnel, the grapevines here, here and here, across here. Um, and I'm stood along this path, but you can see already if I stand up straight, this bottom vine is in the way. I've got this space at the back, I've got this pathway. It's about five foot of space that's wasted just because this bottom vine is here. So I'm going to cut this off and I think this will help to solve a couple of issues. It'll give me more space down here. It will stop so much of the demands on the as yet new roots on this plant because it's still only five years old, this, this vine. It's not very, still a very young plant. Um, so it will just stop the demands on there and make these two upper vines more productive and it will let light in here and I can use this space. And what I'll be doing is I'll cover all of this bed over winter, completely cover it so the soil area is gone. And that will allow the roots of this vine to percolate, if you like, uh, or spread up all the way up along this bed. Because what I have been doing when I've been planting these two small beds either side of the, of the plant's root zone, I've been root pruning as I found the roots they've been wanting to spread in there. Well, now I'll let them spread now, let them fill that area, and it'd be overall better for the plants. Maybe later I could grow another vine back if I wanted to, or grow on further over. But all in all, I think it'd be better for the plants. Because one thing I've realized is when you plant, you plant outside, um, the roots will spread outwards and away from your tunnel. Because where I've got the tunnel, plastic trench down it goes down about this deep so the plant roots are right next to that plastic growing out sensing the plastic and then they're going and diverting another way and diverting back into the tunnel that's where i made that mistake whereas i should have planted it outside and the roots could have spread a lot easier in this five years this vine has been here and i probably wouldn't have this shanking problem now so that's all of my causing but i've worked it out I can rectify it and these two vines will give us more than enough grapes next year to satisfy our needs and I get a permanent bench area here. All these trays can go underneath it because there won't be soil or weeds growing underneath and I've got a permanent bench to put um, any of my cuttings or, or perennial plants that need to stand a long time before they're ready for planting out, anything like that. I've got other areas in the, in the plot and there's new areas coming for the general day-to-day -day running of the plot plants, you know, the veg plants, and some of my annual flowers and things. But this will be for longer term projects. And hopefully, maybe, heading into next spring, at the very end there, where is my massive junk pile, I'm, I really want to clear that and make a proper potting station down there. But that's kind of pie in the sky ideas at the minute. I just really want to sort this problem out and get better crops next year. <laughs> now, another thing to bear in mind is where these wires are supporting the vine at the moment, I've got these brackets up here. Uh, they're just bolted onto the frame with a tech screw, which is a roofing bolt. And there is a hole there for the wire to go through. Now, these aren't very strong at all. They bend and flex. And in the middle here, these are okay, you can just see that one up through there. They're okay, they stay because they get an equal weight pulled on either side. But at the very ends, because these are just aluminium and not that strong, they bend, which then allows this flexing. So we need a much better system to support this vine. So that's another job for once all this leaf and all these, all these fruits are off, once that bottom branch is pruned off, then I can look at how I can support this better. Uh, I'm probably going to get a kit. I was looking at one yesterday, but uh, I'm not happy with the support that I need to uh, bolt onto the frame. I need to find something a bit stronger. Um, you also need to have the vine actually pushed away from the plastic because your plastic actually dishes in under tension on your polytunnel. And if you tighten a wire between each hoop, that will actually be cutting into the plastic. So you need that step away 
which is why I've got those brackets there to do that so that nothing is cutting into the plastic. There's a couple of leaves leaning against them, against the plastic, but other than that, it's fine. So you need to have that step gradient away. So I'll need to find some brackets that are a bit stronger. Now, this fruit is ready, as you can see, but it could be a lot better. You can see amongst there, there's a few green um, grapes when they should be jet black. And there'll be some in there that are bitter. There'll be some that aren't fully sweetened yet. They are a very, very sweet, nice tasting grape. They have got seeds in, but we use them for juicing, or that's the intended use for them this year. Um, they're good bunches. And what you can do is you can thin out grapes. So we're at the end of this one. You've got these small ones. You would come along with a pair of fine nose scissors and cut those little grapes out and that will allow the bigger ones to swell more and you get a much better quality grape for your money and it it doesn't take long i just haven't done it this year <laughs> as usual but i'm going to pick some of these i'll take them home and at the kitchen table i'll um i'll sort them out and juice them and we'll be drinking fresh grape juice tonight with our dinner It'd be nice if we had enough that I could put some in a jar and pasteurise it and save it, you know, but we'll see. We'll probably just demolish it all anyway. But there's tons and tons of fruit on here. I mean, look at this, look at this vine at the back here. There we go, we just get you in a bit closer. It's absolutely laden and it's why the vine is um, pulling down. So I am going to pick a few bunches to take up today. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's a, that's a lovely bunch. <laughs> I'm going to have a couple of these little fellas as well. <laughs> Lovely jobly. So that is a lovely harvest to, to take from the plot. I am very, very pleased with that. And I know that they're super sweet. They won't take much picking over and then we'll juice them. And fresh grape juice is just fantastic. It really is. And these are so lovely and tasty and sweet. And I can't wait for uh, getting home and, and getting them sorted out. But that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed that. A bit of an insight into grape growing. If you've got any questions, just throw them in the comments underneath and I'll do my best to answer them. Um, this is only the second vine I've ever grown. I grew all when I was much younger and that was a white grape. And I grew that outside. Um, but I was much further southward where there was much more appealing, shall we say, than up here in cold north. But anyway, I've got plenty more pickings to come off this, so I'm going to be quite busy over this next week. And then through the season, we'll come back to this as I'm doing the various, shall we say, repairs or adjustments, prunings, whatever, and supporting. We'll do all that through the winter, through the winter month. So if you don't want to miss that, just hit the subscribe button below and you'll be notified as soon as uh, I post more content. Well, there you go. That's it from me today. Look after yourselves, everyone. Stay safe. I'll see you all very, very soon. Serrano. Wow, look at them. <laughs>